Austin, how's it going, man? How you doing? Um, doing all right. I mean, obviously, you guys have been just kind of banged up a little bit the last week or two on the O line. I guess just you know, right. what is that kind of challenge, for lack of a better word, been just kind of preparing for a season while knowing mm -hmm. you know you're kind of limited. Well, I mean, when you look into it, yeah, it's, it's always it's a little bit of a uh, not really a setback in that case because you have guys out. But really, we also what people would know is that we have uh, those guys that are, won't be able to go full speed are still out there getting those mental reps, so where they're not losing a step whenever it comes to the game mentally. So I think it's always we've been taking the right precautions with all our injured guys, and then we're also getting a lot of them back. Like the past, like even yesterday, we've had. I think we almost have everybody back. So really having those guys take all those middle reps and then they stay in their playbook. You know, it's fall camp. They really didn't have, like, anything else to do besides take middle reps. So it really didn't um, hurt us at all. So. Hey, Austin Garland, Gil, Fox State, New Orleans. Uh, how fired up are you that UCLA game is on the horizon? You can you're, you pass camp right. now and you can finally focus on another opponent. How excited is that for you? I mean, it's, it's it's very. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to it. You know, uh, my first time in California. You know, uh, first time really. This being in the plane for this long. So uh, no, I'm extremely excited. I'm extremely excited for the team, for the old line, for offense and defense, for everybody. It's gonna be, and especially the Tiger fans being able to get back to you know what's behind me, LSU Tiger football. You know, so uh, I'm really excited for it, and I just can't. I just can't wait. So. It's hey, the countdown starting. Hey Austin, Jared Rose, your TigerDetails.com. How you doing? Um, good, man. How are you? You know, pretty well, pretty good, pretty good. Looking forward to a competition Tuesday. You know. Okay. Uh, Garland just asked you, I guess, about being able to finally start focusing a little bit more on right. UCLA. Does the lead up to this season, through all your years at LSU, does this remind you a little bit more of, of one year versus another, or anything like that? I imagine. Some similarities to last year with COVID stuff, but, but not quite right. the same with uh, uncertainty. But just all your years, does it remind you of any previous ones? Uh, I would say each – I wouldn't say it wouldn't remind me of a specific one uh, because each one of them had this, this, its significance to where it's not like – each uh, season stood out on its own to where I couldn't really, like, pinpoint, like, oh, it feels like this, this one feels like that. And, like, I think this one's just genuine like the other – <laughs> Seems like 10 other seasons I've been a part of, but you know, this is the fifth season, and I think it's going to be as genuine as the ones before. Hey, Austin, Matthew Green. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh -oh. oh, I was going to say, this one standing out and being kind of its own, what, right. what does kind of, how would you, I guess, we talk about team identities. What is mm -hmm. the identity of this lead up to this season? What kind of stands out and makes this one feel different from the rest? Uh, the major thing that you always hear, and then I think it's the the most used word of this past uh, team, like going into this season, would be like the overall camaraderie of this team. I don't think really in the past years the team chemistry, like it's always been there. You know, it's always been there, like for the years I've been here. But I think this is the most spoken out it has been to where how like how like like Coach O says, like you know how united and one team one heartbeat it is. I think this is like the most like the best example of that, so. Hey Austin, uh, Matthew Bruni here from 24-7 Sports. Um, obviously, I'll have to Tell the Truth Monday, uh, competition Tuesday. Right. Uh, what what does that do for y'all, just to have that kind of schedule, just to go through what uh, we all need to go through on Monday, and what was it like this past Monday after the second scrimmage? Well, yeah, you know, uh, Monday's usually for like a game week, we'll, like you said, Tell the Truth Monday. We get the look at all of our corrections, look at everything that we did wrong, and then build off of that, you know, because like Coach O likes to say to us, you know, the SEC is a copycat league. You're going to see the same thing every week. And then if you did one thing, they're going to try to expose that weakness so where you can be able to just grow from your corrections and then do better the next week. But uh, from an overall standpoint of the scrimmage, I feel like it was a very, like, even scrimmage, like, the defense would get a very good, very good drive against us, and then also we would just come right back towards more of just a back and forth type thing instead of the first scrimmage. So, yeah, Austin, awesome. you mentioned you know maybe this is the most of the one team one RP you've seen. I mean, are right. there specific things you're like? What are you seeing? I guess that makes you feel so good about that. 
it's 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 very complicated to say, you know, because like yeah. it's kind of like the describing how close we are and like describing like it's just more of you see everybody like gelling together, like you just feel it in the air, and like that that feeling you just can't really describe. It's just like it's crazy. It's it's really something like I personally like have grown to love more and more like about this team that we see every day, you know. But the uh like the camaraderie and stuff is just is if you're here for just one day, maybe thirty minutes to an hour, you'll be able to just yep, I know what he's talking about, you know. Hey, Austin, this is Scott Rabelais from the Advocate. I, I've got a somewhat silly question for you, but I'm actually, <laughs> uh, being as you're concentrated on football so much, have you been aware of the Milk Crate Challenge out there? And it seems like something that, that would be, uh, it seems like something that would be off limits uh, uh, for, for the football team to do. Yeah, uh, so uh, I, <laughs> I have, I have seen this Milk Crate Challenge. I have, had, I've had my fair share of laughs about it. Personally, I will not. Yeah, the, nobody's partaking in that here. I know any – I'm speaking for the O-line room and the D-line room. I know for sure none of those guys are going to be doing it because I don't think milk crate cartons uh, have a max capacity of over even 200. So, yeah, I've been seeing them. It's, it's something wild, you know. There's always something different to go on, you know, some new little, uh, like, trend that people be doing. But it's crazy. Uh, I'm personally not going to do it, but I have seen it. Uh, have you tried it? I'm just wondering. So, has anyone on here tried it yet? <laughs> no, no way. No way. I'm an offensive lineman sized myself off. I got you. I got you. Well, shoot, you told us a week ago, Austin, you were going to challenge Max to ping pong to yeah. follow up, did you? I haven't yet. I'll be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. You know, I've been worried about just going through camp. But now that we have more free time, I'm for sure within the next week before we play UCLA, I promise y'all, I'll play them. I promise. All right, I'm asking again next week. All right, I got you. I got you. I got you. Hey, Austin Shock from Channel Nine. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? What where, where your face at? I can't see it. There we go. Got the sunglasses on. Everything. There we go. Um, I'm doing stories about how Green last year was transitioning into this year. Can you recall the Arkansas game last year and not knowing if you were going to play that game or not? You still like the morning? Yeah. It, yeah, and then also the Arkansas game, and then we had a, another game to where we kind of had like a sudden change, how you were saying uh, with Missouri, how we had to play – we were going to play Missouri as a home game, and then we had to go and we, fl we flew like the day before the uh, that Thursday. But uh, with Arkansas, it was – it was, you know, we were just we were just treating it like every other week, you know, because we're not going to treat anything different than the other. It was a little different, you know, that we didn't really decide or we really haven't gone through something like that to where I believe it was the Thursday of that game week where the decision was made when we were going to play. But really, we were just going into it like a normal game week. So it really didn't make any difference. Y'all have a good one. Oh, one more? All right, we got one more. We got one more. Hey, man, uh, just before you go, if you had to put money on one player to successfully complete the Milk Crate Challenge, who would be, like, the best and maybe the worst bets? <laughs> okay, okay. I'll say, the, yeah, the best for the best Milk Crate Challenge. We're talking about best, like, he would finish it, or best it would be just hilarious to do. Which one? Because that's the, but I think best would be. I feel like. Yeah, I was gonna say like most successful, but most I guess successful. Like funniest outcome would would be good too. Uh. I feel like the best one would probably be. Best one would probably be uh probably one of the receivers or like I feel like. Uh, Kayshawn Bowie would probably do it because you know he has, I feel like he could do it. Stingley probably could. I see he could do it. He'll probably use it as a workout or something. But uh, uh, like lit, any of those corners and receiver guys. But funny wise, I to be honest with you, I would probably if like Big Cardell Tom is you know like 
uh, I would like to see if Neil would do it. I would, I would, I would, I would try it. You know, I would just. But I feel like mine would be pretty funny too. Any other plus guy, like plus size guys, would be funny because I feel like as soon as we get to that second or third, our foot's gonna go straight through, and then that's the end of the clip. So that'll be <laughs> that'll be funny though. Thanks. Man. All right, y'all have a good one.